It's Thursday, it's approximately four o'clock, and you're watching Chelsea and Tony live, and we have an incredible story today by two incredible guests, Dan and Sally Watson. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Doing good. Good. <laughs> so you're you're all probably familiar with Dan and Sally. They have their own photography YouTube channel. We're friends with them. They're incredible photographers, incredible teachers, and they also just had a very crazy experience with a shark. We're going to talk about that soon. Um, but first, I want you all to submit your photos because the theme today is silhouettes. So go to stp.io slash submit, submit those photos. We'll go through them while we talk to Dan and Sally. And they're also going to help us look at your photos since they're amazing photographers. You're going to want their feedback. Uh, but first, a word from our sponsor. Yes, yeah, Squarespace, making this show possible and making our portfolios far more beautiful. Whether you want a website or online store or domain, make it happen with Squarespace. It's so easy to do if you can drag and drop. You can make one and you can get it for free for 14 days. No credit card needed, no trickery. If you decide you'd like to buy it, go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. It used to be Tony. It's actually still Tony, but I just prefer you use Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. I want to jump into our story with them because I've been wanting to talk to them about that. So you guys have been everywhere. You've been on, where have you, you've been on Fox News, people.com, BuzzFeed. Where else? Yeah, it was trending on BuzzFeed. Good yeah. Morning America came and did an interview at our house. Nice. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> Tell us what happened. We've got the so, pictures up here. Oh, yeah, yeah. So basically what happened is um, every so often, and we go to the beach all the time, but every so often I bring a drone because, you know, I'm that photographer husband guy that likes to mess around with those things and mm -hmm. photograph really? my kids. And about uh, we had been at the beach for hours, actually, but about 30 seconds into a flight at the end of the day. So right before we were leaving, I took out the drone, got it right above the kids just to take a quick picture of everybody playing in the water. And right there on my viewfinder, I was able to see the shadow of that shark making its way in. And so, yeah, that was a crazy moment right there. I screamed at Sally, who was a little bit closer <laughs> to the kids. And she went to go grab him and get him out. Yeah, I screamed. I was like, get out, get out, get out. Because all I see is Dan in the background, you know, saying, get the kids out, get the kids out. And I had no idea why. And so he immediately brought the drone to me and he showed it to me. And it was, you could see that big shark coming at the kids. It was insane. You just absolutely insane. totally trusted his assessment. Like he said, get them out. And what, oh, yeah. <laughs> what were you thinking? Well, were you thinking shark or were you just thinking... Uh, I don't care what it is. If Dan says get out, it's probably a big deal. <laughs> Dan is not the most emotional human being in the world. He's not the worst. So yeah. when he... <laughs> if I'm yelling, it's probably a reason. Yeah. <laughs> he does not yell at me. He doesn't ever yell at the kids. So when I see him yelling, I know it's something really, really big and really, really serious. So, I mean, obviously I was going to get my kids out of the water. <laughs> okay. A very serious question that I know our audience needs answered what type of drone were you using? What? <laughs> <laughs> it was you know that's Mavic all they care about. Pro. It, it was, was what? That's an extremely important. Yeah. Mavic 2 Pro. Mavic, nice. Good yeah, optical quality good. on that. On that. Good, good for shark spotting. Were you shooting stills or video? Because I really wanted to see a video. Yeah, I was shooting stills. And I wish uh -huh. I was doing like a screen record or something along with it. But yeah. again, I, I mean, I had just gotten it up. I was just going to take a picture. And I didn't even have it really set up to do that at the moment that that happened i kind of lucked out that the exposure <laughs> was right and it was in focus mm -hmm. that is so crazy you guys must have been scared have you been back in the water since no <laughs> no. <laughs> and, no that's and, and like scary. a lot of pools said, yeah it's been a lot of pools and we've been in the sprinkler <laughs> a lot <laughs> but i'm not not gonna go back i think that you know, it's important to teach my kids to not be fearful yeah, and to not be true. scared of anything. Because again, it's that shark's home and, um, you know, we're going to see sharks in the area and it's okay. And I'm just thankful that it turned out the way it did because like literally one week later in the same exact spot, a kid got bit while oh. he was out in the water. No kidding. And so, I mean, again, if it was my five-year-old, it would have been a much different story. You know, just one little bite on a five-year-old could have been pretty tragic. Yeah. You know, our lives could look mm -hmm. really different right now. I am so thankful that you're a nerd, Dan. 
No offense. You took the drove <laughs> to the beach and you saved your whole family. And I'm so glad everyone's okay. That is an amazing story. And I've been so happy for you that you guys have been all over the news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a crazy ride. That's... It's really weird when something goes viral. Yeah. And you're not expecting it at all. No. Yeah, this is next level viral. I totally imagine Dan's kids will just grow up always having a drone over their heads. Don't yeah. you think? <laughs> first day of school, first date, first day of college, that drone is just always over yeah. them. Um, this I, actually... told, I told the kids, I was like, unless daddy brings a drone and hovers for 20 minutes at a time, because you know it only flies 20 minutes at a time, we, we might not get in the water just yet. <laughs> I was actually thinking, though, what a great tool. I feel like Lifeguard should have this. Right? I know. It's it's something that's gotten a lot of bad press, and I'm kind of glad that we've gotten a little bit of good press for drones because they can be used for a lot of great purposes, and a lot of what we see is just people using them in stupid ways. Yeah. You kind of inspired us, too, because we have this spot in our river where all the kids jump off of this 20-foot rock, but there are rocks underneath the water and the drones have this 3D mapping thing where Tony was saying, if we fly over it, we can 3D map the bottom and print oh, it out and hang yeah. it where the kids jump so they can kind of see where the rocks are. So I feel That's, like, see, yeah. parents can use drones to be safe. It's we, not just for creeps. Absolutely. Creep. We learned this the hard way. We both jumped in and both we scraped ourselves up really bad. So <laughs> 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 we're not great examples of parents, maybe, but... <laughs> Okay, we have a few other bits of news while people are sending their pictures in. Today, Sigma announced the FP, all in lowercase. This is the name of their camera. This is their first mm -hmm. L-mount lens, though Sigma has made other, this is the first L-mount camera, though Sigma has made other cameras in the past. It is the smallest full-frame camera ever made, and indeed, it's this weird little square box of a thing. It's less than a pound. It's just got a standard 24 megapixel sensor, no foveon or anything like that. It has a single SD card slot. It does 4K 24, but external raw. And it has some fancy video features. And I think that's who they're targeting with this is the filmmaker market. Mm -hmm. It is meant to be a system camera, which means if you want a hot shoe, you have to attach it separately. If you want a viewfinder, you have to attach it separately. Even the grip is gonna be a separate accessory that you'll have to buy. It is so bare bones. It doesn't have a tilt screen or an EVF or sensor stabilization or even 4K30. How much is it? They wouldn't tell us the price. I think- It's a trap. We talked, we did a video about a $500 full frame camera and this is almost exactly what we described. A bare bones camera that would get people into the full frame market for a low price. And I hope that's what this is. But on the other hand, because they seem to be targeting filmmakers, there's like a 400% tax on anything designed for filmmakers. I also think they might come in much higher than 500 bucks, but I, I, it should be 500 bucks. It is so bare bones. No mechanical shutter in it. Uh, another bit of news. This amazing portrait taken by Nadav Kander. I just spent half of today looking at his work. He's an amazing portrait photographer. This is David Lynch from 2007. Poor Nadav Kander is just going through the mail and suddenly he sees this magazine pop up with his photo. He's like, I did not give permission for anybody to use this particular portrait as a magazine cover. What? Here's what happened. He did an exhibition not too long ago and a photographer took a picture of his picture. You can see in the left corner of that picture there is the like the little plate that they put next to the pictures to say who took it. They then took this picture of his picture and sold it as stock on Alamy. And the magazine bought that stock fic picture and then cropped out the rest of it to return to the original photo. I'm so, like, upset right now. Dan and Sally, what are you feeling? Wow, that's pretty crazy. That is so <laughs> wrong. I would lose my mind. I don't know how again, this could happen. They probably didn't even know. Well, they had to know it wasn't free. Well, so here's the thing. They won't let you upload stock photos unless you have a model release for everybody in the photo. And they also won't let you upload a picture of, say, a statue, since the artist would own the copyright to that statue. So I don't know how this got through their filters, uh, because it's clearly a picture of somebody's artwork that would not be allowable. It would only be allowable as editorial. So somebody could use this picture if they were doing a story about his exhibition, but yeah. they couldn't. It's just, it was an illegal use of it. So I don't know where this went wrong, whether it was the photographer or the stock agency or the magazine, but something went terribly wrong and the photographer is rightfully pissed about it. I wonder what he's going to do about it. 
Um, he said that he hoped the photographer would reach out to him because if he had to reach out to the photographer, it was going to be really bad. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He got pretty, he, he's rightfully mad and he was not afraid to express that. Okay. Let's look at some photos that people have submitted. Dan on the and theme Sally, silhouettes. I value your input. Just jump in anytime. And if you jump, jump in enough, I'm just going to, I'm going to make you comment. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's let's start it off. Why why can't I think of the horror master's name? What's his name? Who always started the movies in silhouette? Justin knows. Alfred Hitchcock. 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 Yeah. Right. This made me immediately think of Hitchcock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Does anybody have feedback? Um, I don't know. It's it is what it is, right? It's a, yeah. It's nice. If you throw like an instrument in there, I think it'd be kind of cool. Yeah, you're right. I think it's missing a story. I know she's on a bench, yeah. but then it just seems like there's some trees and a power line behind her. Mm -hmm. and need a little more context, I think. Yeah, agreed. All right. Seagulls work their way into everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no stopping them. Um, there's not enough subject separation for me. So all the boats are kind of overlapping with the bridge, with the sails. But I can yeah. see it's a beautiful scene. I'd maybe isolate something. Right. It's a little busy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to skip through. Some of these aren't really complying with our theme of silhouette. Okay. This, I think, is a more classical silhouette. We have more um, apparent subjects to it. I'll let you guys talk while I level that horizon, because otherwise it's going to drive me nuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, I like the use of this one. I think the perspective is good. Um, there's probably nothing good going on in the foreground anyway. So there's, there's probably just random people walking around. So it's probably a good time to to use something like a silhouette and get the get the sun looking nice, clouds looking nice. Yeah. Yeah. Do you shoot silhouettes often? Is that something that you two do or yeah, there's um I mean there's two good reasons to do it, I would say. One is if there's something compelling story wise in the silhouette that you can tell whether you can see something about their faces or what they're doing, or if there is something going on in the foreground or or in that area that's busy and it doesn't yes. make sense in the photo, then you can just make it go black and it saves you a lot of the time. We'll do it in weddings quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, because... I shoot a lot of backlit portraits because I love sun flare. I'm just one of those photographers. Mm -hmm. And so a lot and of the, the time I'll have gross. the models. Yeah, they're really gross. So and we I'll don't have wanna models... show that so we can get right. their expression and the look of them in the dress through the window and make it a silhouette and you don't, you don't notice anything about the crappy room. Yeah. <laughs> that's really creative. So you're using silhouettes to illuminate distractions and that's very smart. Um, again, everyone, Dan and Sally, they have an incredible photography YouTube channel and you should check that out. And they're also on Instagram. So Justin, he can bring that up now so you can follow them. Can I say, I think silhouettes are something that require some practice because we're used to seeing a three dimensional world, but a silhouette transforms it to literally two dimensions. And sometimes that requires posing people in very awkward ways, just in order to look natural. Like you might need to separate the legs a little bit or move the arms away from the body. Or Are you turn saying that because this guy's butt is on this woman? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that because I, this looks, looks like a big mass, right? Yeah. You can't yeah. tell what it is. Like, right. are they on a, what is this? Is this a boat engine or? Let's peek. Oh, Chelsea's going to cheat. Sometimes we're really oh. upset by what people hide in the shadows. So. No, there's okay. nothing in they there. They the blocks for us. Um. <laughs> Sally and Dan, do you guys have any suggestions for posing people in silhouette so it looks good? Yeah, I believe turning people to the side is always good. Getting the profile of a person. And if a model has a dress or somebody has a dress, accentuating that by pulling it out would be something beautiful. Um, and a pointing like this one, I think pointing is a great one. It might mm -hmm. be cheesy to some, but at the same time, it creates a story. You got to create something that's going to bring your eye into it. You're right, because with him pointing, my eyes coming down to these two guys that are mostly in silhouette, and then his right. hand is bringing me right back to the scene, which is the main yep. part of the photo. And it works right. really well. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Simone, you get a pick. That was an excellent example of creating a yeah. silhouette. What about this one? Oh, okay, I love that's this pretty one. Cute. I think this is really <laughs> cool. Cats. What is... Oh my gosh, I can unhinge its jaw. <laughs> I'm a little scared right now. Yeah, I'm a little scared. I like that one. It's simple, but I think I think it's cool. Yeah, it's neat. 
Hold on, let me go back to our library here. What about a tip for getting the right exposure? Like, how do you stop it from just looking like a regular photo? Yeah, so you're exposing for the background generally, and a lot of times underexposing that background. So um, if you're if you're using an in-camera meter, you could do a spot metering and put your spot on the brightest area of the photo. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing it in manual mode, it's a little bit, you just crank your shutter speed up, or your aperture, yeah. whatever you need to do to make it darker. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I sometimes well, use good. exposure compensation too, because it's just yeah, right there on absolutely. my camera. So just knock that down. Sometimes I'll yeah. just do it in post. I'll just change the exposure or you could lower the black or raise the black point. Or even do a little dodging and burning if you have something that's like almost a silhouette, but not quite. You're wild. I've cheated it a little bit. And more contrast too. I add a lot of contrast yeah. in my photos. Yeah. That always helps. This is such a, what a fun picture. I, I'm i wondering about the amount of negative space in it, but I don't mind right. it so much. I like it a lot. I would have removed the bird right underneath his butt. But yeah, other than same. that, yeah. I yeah, think it's I a agree. great photo. Yeah. Sometimes when it's so simple, this is mostly colors, I try to just play with the colors a little bit to make it more interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I just jazz it up, guys. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> jazz it up. All right, let's see what else catches our eye. Look at this one. Beautiful. Oh, that's nice. pretty, and it's very nice. I think this is an interesting photo because there was clearly just a plain brick wall behind her mm -hmm. and they just blew it out and made it more interesting. I think I might just take it all the way to black and white. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Awesome shot, Brian. I should mention we also have Chris Reddy here. Sorry, Chris, I forgot to introduce him. And he's going to be taking your questions and comments. So if you have any questions for Dan and Sally or for us or any comments, just type them in the chat and Chris will call through them and relay them to us. Do you have any for us now, Chris? We sure do. Neat. First off, there's a couple of super chats here. Uh, Rick Pastillo was, gave $20 and just wanted to say that they love you, Dan and, and Sally. Aww. And <laughs> Greg H, also uh, $70 in a super chat. And $70? he would like to see an episode on street photography and Leica. But is there a real look to Leica photography? Is there a specific kind of a look? I don't believe it. <laughs> what do you guys think? What's the deal with Leica? There, like people there swear is no by Leica it, photographer but... in the world who won't say there isn't a look to no. Leica. They they all will claim it. Mm -hmm. Um, there is. I don't know if the average person notices it, but yeah, it's it's got a little bit of a characteristic to it. I yeah, think so you just too. Got to get in the club of Leica, <laughs> you know, to understand their yeah. I, I think there's a look. I think you could probably replicate it mm, with sure. the right gear, but I think it has a look. That's it. You're going to make me do another one of my blind test science things. Oh, there you go. Is there really anything Repli in Leica? Replicate the Leica look with a $399 camera. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yeah, and then I will get the biggest Leica snobs out there to take it and see if they can tell. Can a Leica snob tell a Leica picture? Ooh, there you go. Hot topic. We're pushing buttons. What else do you have first, Chris? Yeah, uh... Alexander wanted to know, have you ever used sunglasses as an ND filter or as a polarizer in an emergency? I tried, but it didn't work. <laughs> have you ever tried that, Dan and Sally? N no. My guess is that it would destroy the quality yeah. way more than it would be yeah. worth. There's probably other ways of replicating whatever you need the ND filter for. Yeah. yeah. It, quality is important. Absolutely. Yep. I've tried it on my phone, like sticking my phone through my glasses. Oh, yeah. It doesn't work that well, guys. <laughs> no, it's like you get light in from the side and stuff, yeah. and you, there's not, it's it's not, not sealed up, so it doesn't work sealed. out that well. Here's a picture from <laughs> Kevin H, and it's like it's a almost perfect. But isn't it a statue? Yeah, it must. Be. Oh, is it a statue? Yeah, that's a statue. See the fancy man hat and the fancy man face. <laughs> okay, so being a statue. <laughs> Kevin could take a little extra time and really watch the co composition. And one of the things you want to yeah. check is the edges of the frame. And we have the tail going off the edge here a little bit and this hoof going off the edge a little bit. And then I just removed something that in a silhouette didn't convey. Like I know it was part of the saddle, but. What did it look like? 
<laughs> okay. Oh. Classic Pinterest. Yeah, I think so. I but think it's cute. <laughs> what, what is that? Like it's supposed is it is it love? Yeah. Yes, but, but the girl doing the E, she needs, she needs help. Yeah. Oh, E girl, you ruined everything. <laughs> 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 they don't let her go on vacations with them anymore. E girl's yeah. been booted. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a fun activity, and I, I think this is a nice picture to have from like a vacation or something. That's cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's cute. It's cute. Dan and Sally, do you have any tips for um, like getting rid of that person who doesn't know how to form an E with their arms? <laughs> like, how do you subtly ask them to please leave the family vacation? <laughs> Never come it. back. Yeah. Straighten your arms. <laughs> Tony's not fun to vacation with. He boots you. <laughs> You're ruining my Instagram. You're dead to me. <laughs> All right. Milky Way Silhouette Single Shot Not a Comp by Brock Brinkerhoff. Thoughts, feelings. I think I'd get so rid of this one line. Sorry. Most ahead. Milky Way shots are by default silhouettes just because you can't really expose for both. Um, usually, what I like about this one is that there's something going on in the foreground uh, to kind of make it worthwhile. Yeah. So I would have liked to see more of the person's yeah. face or head on there, though, or maybe doing something that gives a little perspective. Right. Maybe can... holding a beer or like the side profile of them or mm -hmm. something. Yeah, I can confirm they do have a head. It's just below <laughs> the chair here. Um, but yeah. I agree. They're kind of their shape is getting lost in the chair. Mm -hmm. So even if they had leaned forward for the picture, then we mm -hmm. would have, the story could have been a little better. But I like this, this edge of yeah. the world yeah. feel with the silhouette. It's very cool. I'm going to give it a pick. Brock, There's a bunch a of Milky Way shots with silhouettes when you come across them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I need Milky Way shots. Okay. Agreed. Okay. Th this is... It's so close, but it's a little bit unbalanced, right? Yeah. Am I just being OCD about no, this? No, they're violating the rule of space. Yeah, and you could actually yeah. fix this in post. I mean, better to do it but in at the time, but extend it to the left a little bit, extend the canvas. Uh, what do you all think? Yeah, just, just that. You always want the negative space to be in front of your subject in the direction they're moving. So, um, But there's new features in Photoshop that would allow you to create additional space. It will do that for you. I would have also created a little bit of a sky, maybe made it super orange so it can be like a sunset in the Sahara mm -hmm. or something like that. I think it's it's pretty. It's just little things. Yeah, you could use a graduated filter mm -hmm. and bring down the sky a little bit. I think they actually caught the detail. It's just it's so close to the right side of the histogram. It's like reading as white mostly. But like You can see there's right. some color in there. I bet they have it in their raw file. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good shot, Mark and Roy. Um, okay, what else strikes us? Here we got a concert photo. That looks yeah, pretty like awesome. That yeah, that's awesome. That's good. very nice. Good composition, right? Centered yeah, so with the lights. drums in the background. That's a great yep. photo. And doing something that's electric, that's, that's perfect. Beautiful. Good energy. Everyone likes mm -hmm. it. Good feedback. Okay. What is this? That's a hot air balloon. Yeah. Well, what do you guys think of the picture? So it looks like they tried to create the silhouette after the fact, which is why they lost the exposure in the sky. Yeah. Um, if they probably needed to go down with the exposure comp more so that they could create that in camera, which would have created more detail and, and you would have preserved a lot of the detail in the sky, the clouds, the colors, all that. Yeah. I might have made it black and white as well. Let's try it. <clears throat> Ooh, I like those God rays. Yeah. Have you guys tried the texture tool yet? Yes, and yeah. I like it a um, lot. Me yeah. too. I'm really all about it. I think I've been going a little yeah. overboard, to be honest. Same. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot going right, but you had some really good tips, Dan. And I like the black and white, Sally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, David, if you shot raw, maybe go back to that raw file and see if you can recover the highlights a little bit. Maybe you can salvage that picture. Well... I guess it's technically a silhouette, but it doesn't feel like there's 
the sub a subject, right? Right. It's pretty. It's a pretty it's scene. Pretty. But I maybe emphasize the fog a little bit more to make it a little bit more moody. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Let me try with. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, that'll take a little work, but I like the layers. I like the depth of the photo. Yeah. I think that's good. interesting. Nice shot, Hyena. Wow. What picture is grabbing your eye, Chelsea? This one. Oh, Ooh. yeah. That's oh, wonderful. Nice. Yeah. Love that. But I now that I see up close, I think maybe the the blacks are clipped a little bit too much. Because this almost looks like a vector or something up here. Right. But I love the composition. It looks cartoonish. Yeah, it does look cartoonish. It looks it looks a little mm -hmm. strange. And then these highlights are not as bright. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just process it a little differently. But I think it's so cool. Very cool. It is very neat. Different. A person in that window or a bride and groom looking at each other, towards each other, would be an awesome shot with See, you take the best wedding photography so you're always seeing things <laughs> for always scouting <laughs> she's always scouting okay what about this one? this one oh. oh go ahead you own it this one's for sally oh oh Ooh. very nice the flash behind them classic very nice mm -hmm. i like that a lot i would have made it a little more bright yeah I wonder if I can. Yeah. You can tell it's kind of like a filter over that, making it a little bit more cloudy. Mm hmm. But that's beautiful. Very and nice. even, even very, her, very nice. Her arm is lit, so you're still getting the outline of her face, which is really nice. Yeah. Yep. It's a beautiful shot. Is he in a kilt? Oh. Yeah. Have you shot a wedding like that? A kilt no, one? but I'm dying for Dan to take me to Scotland so I can. <laughs> Dan, what the heck? Uh, you know, <laughs> Scotland. You Let's know, have a what? petition. Take Sally to Scotland. <laughs> okay, we're going to start that after the show. Okay. <laughs> um, this is interesting. The sunburst on her stomach is pretty intense. Yeah. So what a lot of people will do on something like this is do something creative with that sun. So make them hold their hand out mm -hmm. and make the sun feel like it's coming from their hand or something like they're holding it with that flare. Um, just use it in a maybe a different spot of the person. Yeah. <clears throat> but other than that, it's a it's a really cool, really creative shot. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I agree. But I think if you put it in the hand in the hand, then suddenly it's like power is coming from their hand. It, coming from her stomach is like. Um, it's telling a little bit of a different story. Yeah. Maybe it's a story about women like being empowered from their uterus or something. I don't know. <laughs> Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Maybe she just Might found out she's pregnant. Yeah. yeah. Let's take a look at one more picture and then we'll uh, take some questions say. while I... I don't know what that's about. <laughs> I'm not sure either. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, I just thought it was interesting. The Lightroom just closed. Okay, well, now is a good time to uh, take a question, Chris. Why does Lightroom do that? Chris, do you have any questions or comments from our friends? All kinds of wild comments. There's a, 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 a growing wave of requests for a Tony Leica video. Oh, people <laughs> like that idea, huh? Okay. Yeah. I kind of like that, too. Simulate the look. And can you discuss the use of filters for silhouette photos? Anybody? Dan and Sally, do you guys have any like filters? Yeah, I'm not sure what kind of fil like a f filter in post or like a filter on location. Do you know if yeah to I mean, help create the silhouettes like any kind of an ND filter? Or do you just expose it? Um, so you don't need an ND filter to take a silhouette. You can usually do it in camera. Uh, sometimes you will have to turn your ISO down all the way, turn your aperture to F16 or F22, and then you crank your shutter speed as much as possible. Yeah. But in pretty much every situation, unless you are just blasted by light, it's possible to get a silhouette without an ND filter. Yeah. Good. Okay. No need to buy anything. And, al and along the same lines, uh, do you look for, when you're doing a silhouette, when you have done silhouettes, 
do you look for a natural composition for silhouettes or do you make one using fill lights or flash something like that have you done i've done both the, we've done both we've done both um yeah so if you can if you see a scene that works really well and it's just not like there's just not a powerful light behind them you can always add one and create it so putting a flash behind them that's outlining them you have to blast it or another kind of a light behind them can can help create that silhouette. I do that on flat days as well. So I suggest it like if there's no sunset, because again, I like sunsets, you can throw a flash behind a person. It just creates that depth in a photo. Um, you know, it can be used for other things other than silhouettes too. It mm -hmm. just creates something nice and different. Yeah, interesting side lighting. And you can put um, a filter on it, like a colored filter. I put an orange yeah. one on before and then the light is orange and it looks like sunset. You can be mm -hmm. creative. Yes, you can. Cool. Okay, um, let's take a second and look at you guys a Squarespace know. portfolio. We're going to look at a portfolio. Let's look at this one because I see some wedding shots here, and Dan and Sally happen to be wedding photography experts. This is Kyle Long Photography. And I, okay, I'm already, I, I'm a little baffled as a user because I tried to scroll and... I think this is just what you get. It's kind of this repeating pattern of thumbnails. It looks fun to me. I want to click on wedding. Okay. All right, now we scroll. Okay, from a web design perspective, the menu completely changed from the front page to this page, and you want the menu to be in the same place every time. I think I would just get rid of that landing page because I found it confusing. But these shots are really nice, right? Oh, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Great I love, job. I love this one. Yes, that's gorgeous. I love the coloring as well in the photos. Mm -hmm. He has a nice style. Mm -hmm. Very natural. I like it a lot. And I also like that this is one of the first things I can click on, so I know that this is something he does all the time. I would love to have this photo of myself, so it seems very right. hireable. Okay. And it looks like people are having fun. You can tell his style of photography as well, right? I'm a little bit more dramatic and moody, whereas he obviously has a lot of people do more fun things. And I like that about that. It's very consistent. I love when I see photographers be consistent on how they shoot, especially with weddings, because you need to show a bride and groom, you know, who you're going to be on their wedding day. That's a really good point. And you're right. It does look like he's fun. Everyone looks like they're having fun in all of these pictures. Mm -hmm. These shots are awesome, but how many shots is too many shots because it feels like we're scrolling forever i don't know so one one in a column is usually too little usually you'd want to go maybe three and then they could click on a photo and and zoom it up if they if they wanted to but you'd want to get a few more and then also i'm seeing um a, probably some really nice shots mm -hmm. and a couple of maybe b or c type shots and uh, I would probably use less of those and more of just your best work. Yeah, absolutely. So how many photos would you put in just your wedding page? So one of the things is I like is that you feature different weddings. So especially, and it's good for venues as well. So you can say, um, you know, Dan and Sally got married at the Highland Manor and you can have them click on that. And then it's a, it's a, the best shots from that wedding. And mm -hmm. I think that is more of a way to kind of portray what kind of wedding photographer you are rather than just random photos. You can do that on your first page, but once it, you, like somebody clicks on that wedding tab, have them look at actual weddings that you've shot so they can see what you know their wedding might look like at that particular venue or you know i mean it's again it's because consistency is very important i think that's really valuable feedback sally because if i'm looking to hire someone for my wedding i was scrolling through this one picture thing and i'm thinking well where's the cake shot and what is it going to look like right. when he does the group shots and what do my right. shots look like with the groom and you're right if you just had one wedding and showed everything you could get right. a better idea of what your wedding would look like absolutely nine times out of ten the bride and groom is like hey i'd like you to send me a couple of galleries of a wedding you shot so that we can know what we're going to expect you know it's very important to them so i want to look at his contact page because if i were interested in having my wedding done this is where i'd go next Mm -hmm. um i know where he's based that's important mm -hmm. uh and he also does concert photography which we saw wedding coverage begins at a thousand all other photography begins at 200. i think 
Kyle, your work is looking great, but to summarize the feedback so far, um, get rid of the front page because it's a little bit confusing. Reduce the number of images overall, show only your best work. I noticed a typo on your menu there. It says family with an extra I. And on your about page here, your email address uh, is just, you forgot the dot com in your email address. Oh, and Dan suggested switching to a layout that showed multiple pictures side by side because as it is, the pictures are kind of too big to see. And Sally suggested showing the weddings grouped by each event instead of just showing a bunch of random photos. And I think that's yeah. extremely valuable advice. Here's what Kyle had to say about Squarespace. Squarespace has made it so easy to build my website. It allowed me to focus more on shooting and less on learning web design. It is easy and intuitive and a blessing to have in my life. Yeah, it really is super easy. Wow. I actually we don't screen those ahead of time. It's we don't just, screen them. Everybody loves Squarespace. Guys, who uses it? Please don't say something like foul, just because you know we don't screen them. <laughs> we'll go full Anchorman on it. We will. I'll read it. Whatever it is. <laughs> um, no, I really had two other websites before, and I never finished them because I was so bad at it. And Squarespace is easy. If you don't believe me, you can just try it for free. No credit card needed. You don't have to remember to cancel or any of that funny business. Just go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Try it out. Put your pictures in. See how professional it can make you look. And if you just do the trial, you can submit that to us, and we'll review a free trial, too. And then if you decide you like it and you'd like to buy it, you can get 10% off with the coupon code CHELSEA. Thanks, Squarespace. It's not the love. I will import new pictures submitted during the live show. Chris, maybe you have uh, another question for these guys. Yeah. How about, <laughs> as with your fog plan, do you ever have a sunset or s sunrise silhouette plan? Of course. How about you, Dan and Sally? Do you have places you know you'd like to visit during a beautiful sunset? Oh yeah, absolutely. 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 Especially at every like wedding too. I know the spots at each venue and we take them there mm -hmm. every time at sunset. That's smart because then you know where you can get a good picture and you're just like putting people in that location. It's good to have a sunset plan guys mm -hmm. and a silhouette yeah. plan. And you can go right on to Google maps and you know where the sun sets every, every night. So yep. it's easy to see like, if, are you overlooking the water at nighttime on the West side or is it the East? You know, so you can explore the area really easily and get kind of an idea of if it's a good sunset spot. Yeah. Yeah. That's smart. We use an app. Um, I think it's called the photographer's ephemeris and it shows you where the sun is rising and setting, and then it can help mm -hmm. you kind of align yep. what features you'd want in the background. It makes yeah. shooting a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. This one caught my eye, Chelsea, because every time we're in a hotel with a frosted glass, like bathroom door, <laughs> you make me pose for a few pictures just like this. And yeah. it is such a cool effect. I love it so much. Because I want It's missing blood. I feel like it's missing blood. <laughs> got real dark on us, Sally. I didn't blood. expect that from you. <laughs> you would. <laughs> sorry. I'm scared. Sally's actually frightening. People don't realize that, okay? <laughs> sorry. Nice shot, Matt. Interesting feedback you got from Sally. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys really plan this, and she actually knows how to do yoga. Really nice. Yeah, that's oh, a beautiful that. shot. What would you guys change about it? Nothing. I think it's no. beautiful. I, I think, think they did a great job. I think the sky could be a little more interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like, there you go with the graduated filter. I just, I like it. <laughs> and nothing extreme, just, it, uh, you know, I think it looks a little yeah. more natural. Great shot, Mitch. Yeah, Mitch. I feel like for a silhouette, um, that would have been good as a color image because you can let the mountains go black anyway, and uh, and the sky probably would have mm -hmm. popped a little bit. Yeah, I think it would have worked color. I think you're right. Yeah, it's not as though the colors would be overwhelming because the foreground's just simple. Right. Mm -hmm. This is gorgeous, but I kind of want him to be pointing, right? <laughs> yeah, or holding a camera, or I think is that a girl? I think I see hair. Do I, am I? I don't know. It's not my know. job to try to guess people's gender. <laughs> <laughs> Tony just got so woke. It scared me. I like it a lot. I like it. Yeah, a I lot. think it's a great shot, Michael. Me too. And also the fact that the clouds are behind him make him pop yeah. even more. I'm gonna give it a pick. This yeah. one's amazing. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. I'm gonna let you do this one, Tony, because you're always talking about planes and stuff. You're right. This this is a plane. <laughs> um, 
No, I think it's it's a good shot for a profile. I don't like that the tail of the other plane is in there. And of course, like the fence and stuff is cool. But maybe what I would even do is get closer to it and, and pick out some identifying features and find interesting shapes where it's still recognizable as a plane, but the picture itself is a little more abstract because it's just like we're very aware that it's just an old broken down plane at a museum it's or something. Broken down? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> That's the way it comes across. <laughs> okay. Stock photo. This is cool. It's cool. It's a little busy. Yeah. These people Not have it going on. Story. Oh, they're having their picture taken. Oh. It's like a Where's Waldo type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sky is beautiful. It's though. really beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Um, mistake of the past. He's, it's the watermark that he's concerned about. No, I don't think that's what he's talking about, Tony. Rude. I like the bird. I think it's a little cluttered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have removed the, the little tree next to the bird and maybe gotten down a little bit further if he, for perspective wise, mm. maybe. Yeah, good suggestion. You know what Tony taught me? Just crop. Just when in doubt, crop. That's a bad crop. <laughs> it didn't work sorry Tobias <laughs> okay <clears throat> this one's sad they're visiting uh, a grave mm. um, hmm. so here the silhouette we need to be able to see the tombstones right and yeah. that's not totally conveyed because we have those trees there and I mean I appreciate that Maybe you're not going to try to pose somebody while they're at right. a cemetery. But, but they could have moved maybe a little bit to the right. Right. I would have moved a little bit and would have gotten the silhouette of them looking down towards the grave. And you can obviously Ooh, see this yeah. wind blowing as well. And you could see the wind blowing in the hair. And it'd be a little bit more dramatic for that because that's a very poignant moment Yeah, for that person. Great suggestion, Sally. Good feedback. I'm accidentally just raising exposure more and more. <laughs> oh gosh, light room. Why do you do this? Let's to jump me? back to the grid view and see what we do. All right, let's see what catches our eye. This one. Wow. Yeah, it's nice. That's very cool. Very movie esque. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. It really is. That's cool. I love the emotion behind it. There seems to be a story. I mean, there's no context, so I don't know what the story is, but I still I still like it. I'm giving you a pick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Look at this one. Oh. What? Whoa, Charles. <laughs> okay, Sorry. there you go. You came back to it. <laughs> Sorry. Adam, you get a pick. This shot's awesome. Would you guys do anything different there? Maybe um, have him walking in the direction of the light. But other than that, and I'm sure it was probably just a random person. Right. But uh, other than that, it's great. Great job. Yeah, good Street suggestion. photography. It looks good. <clears throat> it does. Yeah, and I think if you were just walking around and you saw this cool shadow like that with the sun low in the sky, it might be a good time to just wait and wait for somebody to come through, which I bet is what they did. This was beautiful. I love this composition. It's nice. I would have had a little less fence in it, just a little bit, maybe stood up just a little bit more. But other than that, I think it's a great photo. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's keep scrolling and see if does anything catch your eye. Well, here's a classic like engagement shot. Oh, you guys are the nice. experts. What's right and what's wrong about yeah. this? Yeah, tell me. Um, I would have had him looking down at her. I feel like he's just looking into nowhere. Um, mm -hmm. That connection is extremely important when it comes to a couple mm -hmm. taking a photo. So that's really the only thing I would change. I think that's a beautiful photo. It is beautiful. These warm tones remind me of your style a little bit too, Sally. Yes, that's very much my style. That's gorgeous. Great job. Look at this one. Wow. Oh, I love that one. I like that the dog didn't that's stay gorgeous. still. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving this a pick. This yeah. is just like, that's wow. That's beautiful. good. Fantastic. Beautiful. I just want to live that life, you know? Right. Okay. What else do we have? Oh, let's check out the skateboarder here. That's a pretty great subject, right? Yeah. I got down fun. low. You got other I mean, skateboarders. 
What were you going to say, Sally? Maybe go up to like higher aperture and had like the the sun maybe beaming through a little bit Ooh, more. Oh, like a little bit, bit of a burst. <clears throat> right. Yeah, you'll get that star burst yeah. usually around f22, yeah. whatever the highest aperture of the lens is. Those can be cool. Yeah. Uh, maybe go down a little Oops. bit more and shoot up that slight bit. But, yeah. Um, it's good. A oh, very good pick. Wow, we had, we did get a lot of good ones. Look at this one's creepy. That's a shadow. Oh. Oh. That is a cool selfie. But that's very yeah. cool. Do you need any blood in this one too? No, no blood on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, oh that's my so cool. god. Oh, get a pick. That is very cool. Spiny <laughs> that flower mantis. That is awesome. I'm... That reminds you of like Mulan. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cute. Yeah, Stuart, you win. That's awesome. That's my favorite. <laughs> and Stuart just pointed his camera right into the sun, too. He's not afraid. <laughs> Stuart has no fear. What's happening here? Bromance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they're agreeing on things or about to start arm wrestling. I love the beautiful colors. What if they're yeah. like, sunsets are cool. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a bromance. <laughs> it's a bromance. You're right. <laughs> Sally nailed it. Here's another romantic picture. Oh, I'm going for the dog. I got yes, distracted. <laughs> I wish there was just a little more space above the guy's head. But you... Yeah, and I would have put the sun in between the guy and the dog. Oh, but what if nothing comes between him and his dog? Well, that is a good place. <laughs> yeah, and I wouldn't be afraid to to pose people. Sometimes you don't want to interfere, but like give them some direction. Tell them to <laughs> you don't know put his move his arms or you know. Yeah. Okay. okay. So wait, I want the romantic one that I saw before for Sally and Dan. Oh, cute. This background's pretty cluttered, though, right? I think it's lit it by a flash. Green is distracting me the the leaves and then he just needs to take one more step in towards her he's mm -hmm. leaning a little bit too much mm -hmm. mm, see and you... the body movements are more important in a silhouette absolutely he should embrace her yeah what good suggestion black and white i no. prefer the color but the the leaves have to go okay all right you that's good feedback you're very good at posing because you work with so many people and those are those little things that make a photo seem off, just slight. Absolutely. You know, body. And you language. have to be careful posing with people that you know don't necessarily do this as a career. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't really understand. So, just have them be together, more of an embrace. Okay. Well, we can field another question and then get out of here. Oh, this one's cool though. I yeah, that is one. pretty cool. What is this? Like, is this how they fish? Do they just whack fish? <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing? No, I think you're right. I think they whack the fish. Oh, okay. If, fish. In the comments, you can tell us if this is your picture. Do they whack the fish? <laughs> Everybody wants oh to God. know. <laughs> Chris, what other questions do you have for us? Yeah. From all of you, what is the what are the elements of a good silhouette? Should it tell, I mean, it needs to tell a story. I was going to say storytelling. Three things that you would make sure are in a silhouette. I think storytelling is number one. Like yeah. if you think of the guy that was in front of the Milky Way and there was the pine tree and he was standing there, the story to me was he had hiked this beautiful location and he was enjoying this night and I wanted to be there. And the guy with his dog too, there's a story there. Um, yeah. I'll take number two. Number two would be shape shape as opposed to form shape is the yeah. two-dimensional outline of something mm -hmm. whereas form is the three-dimensional thing you have to shift your mind into thinking differently and your eye is going to see it differently because your eye perceives so much more dynamic range you might see that three-dimensional form whereas your camera's not going to tip close one eye because you lose your depth perception when you close one eye and that helps me assess if things are going to be separated properly in a photo right okay absolutely so Element number three is over to you guys. Oh, yeah. No no pressure. We took the easy stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'd say composition is extremely important with it because you're going to have a lot of negative space because basically what would have been, you know, 16 mountains is all just one black blob. And so making something out of those black points and those white points that are now consuming so much more of your photo is, is really important. 
So composition, think about it, analyze it, move if you have to, get it going on. I think movement is another good one for silhouette. I think that can create a story. So you're having your subject move. Again, dresses, you can move them up, have a person make sure they're doing their profile. You can have them spin. You can have them walk back and forth. Movement is such a cool Mm -hmm. element to silhouettes as well. You two have so many good tips, and that's why I think – Everyone should go to your YouTube channel right now. Justin, pull it up. Subscribe. They really do deserve your support. You're going to learn so much. They're so lovable, as you can see. They have so much to offer. Even sharks love them. Even sharks love them too much. That's true. Too soon? (laughs) Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. You guys are amazing. We love you guys. And thank you for putting up with our Squarespace plugs because we got another one. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Squarespace, for making this possible. If you want your very own Squarespace website, you can get a 14-day free trial. And if you decide you like it, you can go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea and use the coupon code Chelsea to get 10% off. You can also use Tony, but I don't advise that. Support me. Okay? (laughs) All right. Thanks, all of you, for joining us. Thank you, Chris, for fielding questions. And, Justin, everything breaks, and somehow you managed to pull it together. So thank you for that. (laughs) Thanks, Justin. And we'll see you all next week. And the theme will be street photography. Okay. Because somebody asked for it tonight. With a Leica. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Only with a Leica. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, Dan. Bye, Allie. See you guys. That is all. That is all. You guys are so much fun. Thank you for joining us. Oh, of course.